Good evening, everyone. Happy Saturday. This is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, grab a beverage. Let's do a little creating. Um, we're going to play tonight. Uh, once again, we're, we're going off the cuff here. I have no idea what we're going to finish, what our end product good end game is going to look like. So hoping you guys will weigh in and help me design another beautiful card. You're so good at that. Um, so together, I think we can make beautiful things, right? And it's always fun to have a creative escape. Even if it's not perfect, it's handmade one of a kind item, right? So it's uh, valuable from that standpoint. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. It's so good to see you. Uh, for those of you uh, who are tuning in on YouTube, hey, Thanks for being here. If you're catching the replay or replay warrior, drop me a comment. Let me know you're watching the replay. I do read all the comments. Um, if you are over uh, on Facebook, you might be on my Susan Campfield Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator Facebook page. Hello. If you're in my group, my Sue Stampfield group of uh, paper crafters. Hey, uh, so over in the group, we were. Uh, I posted something earlier. I got my nails done today. <laughs> And I can never decide what color to pick. And I posted for the four colors I was debating um, between. And uh, almost none of you picked the color I went with. So now I'm worried that maybe you won't like it. But it also, they never look as good in the photo, you know. So, uh, but I, I know which ones were your favorites. So now I've got some good options for next time. So this is the one that I went with. I think only two people picked it. Um, I'll show you on the camera below. It's really pretty. It's kind of like a hologram thing. So hopefully it'll work with our project. That's the tricky part. Uh, if I get too wild with my colors, it doesn't match you know, might not match what I'm doing because I don't always know ahead of time for two weeks out what I'm going to be making. So welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's so good to see you all. It is April. How crazy is that? April 2nd today. And uh, things are winding down the annual catalog. In fact, I did just update <clears throat> my list with what has sold out and Wow, the stamp sets are literally flying out the door. Um, so there are, uh, yay, you guessed it. Um, there are, they, yeah, don't wait. If you've got a wish list and you haven't had a chance to pick up those retired uh, sets, um, they are really going fast. So um, I would encourage you to do that sooner rather than later. Uh, a lot of the accessories are still available and there's some really awesome deals out there. So uh, make sure to check those out. Uh, so far, the the only things that really that have sold out in the accessories are um, ink refills. Uh, and one other thing, what the heck was it? Look at this. Look, the black mark is like those are all stamp sets that are gone. I'll show you in the under the other camera here in a minute. But um, no, I think that's it. A host set sold out. So yeah, uh, there three of the in colors have sold out. One of the other in, uh, in color ink refills, one of the other in color ring fill, refills is not available right now, but they are anticipating they'll get more in. And that's the Misty Moonlight, one of my favorite colors. So again, um, if you've got a list, <laughs> make sure you don't wait too long. The other big news that is happening is the new catalog is coming. The new catalog starts on May 3rd. And so that's the new annual catalog. We have new in colors. Uh, demonstrators have got to see the catalog online uh, last week and uh, have started receiving their personal copies in the mail. I've ordered my boxes. If you placed an order with me in the last year, um, you'll be getting an e for, email from me asking if you want me to send you a catalog. Or if you didn't order and you would like a catalog, uh, drop me an email at... Hmm, Mm, I have an email somewhere here, susan at suestampfield.com. There it is. And I'll be happy to, to, to get you a catalog. So those will go out um, mid-month whenever the, my boxes come and I get them all packaged up and I put a little uh, gift in there too. So um, you got to give me a little time to get that ready, but it'll be worth the wait, I promise. So let's take this down. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So uh yes all right party time <laughs> you guys are hanging out in the comments that is so cool i have to move this cord because it is blocking my camera and that is not gonna work for me oh, maybe i can loop it up on this thing so sorry all right here we go nope that did not work 
All right, now it's going to be good. All right, let's go ahead and flip to the other camera here. We're going to play with a, uh, a specialty paper tonight. This specialty paper is in the January through June mini catalog. Now, the mini catalog is still ongoing. Um, demonstrators uh, that got to see the new catalog uh, now have a clue as to what things are not going to be carrying over. We don't have an actual list yet that will be coming, but we can kind of figure it out now by looking in the big catalog. And if it's not there, we can almost assume it's not carrying over, although it's possible it could still be there and just be an out of publication option. Um, but the paper I'm playing with tonight is one that I bought from the mini catalog and it, it is not appearing in the new catalog. So I'm assuming it's going away. And I was like, oh, well, let's play with this. It's gorgeous. So let's go ahead and flip the camera here and we'll take a look. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, oh gosh. Hold on. We got issues. We got problems right here in River City. First of all, okay, there's my mess. <laughs> oh, so messy. Oh my gosh, you guys. The struggle is real, isn't it? All the things and they have to be everywhere because I'm not putting anything away. So that would be the problem. All right. So this is the last chance list. All the black marks are showing things that have sold out. This, the first two pages are all stamps. Look at that. All stamps. So uh, holy cow, don't wait. Don't want you to miss out. But lots of accessories um, still available. And look at these prices, 50% uh, off, 40% off. So uh, go in, you can just click on my online store and you can um, go to the last chance products and it will list out the things that are available. So then you know what's what. All right, so let's look at this, uh, this uh, pretty paper. So my, I have a ring light here and that's gonna uh, play a little havoc with us tonight because this mother of pearl paper it's called, which kind of matches the nails, kind of, sort of. It's a beautiful, um, shimmery, glittery, uh, also has kind of a stipple look to it. Um, very, very pretty. And it has a uh, almost, it's very glossy. It has almost an acetate, uh, like a window plastic kind of um, window uh, sheet look to it. It is uh, very reflective, as you can see with my light here. So it's beautiful paper. And uh, yeah, lots of things still on my wish list from the mini too. Let's find it in here. This is um, <laughs> my mini starting to my mini starting to get a little little uh, loved a little uh, too much love. It's getting a little beaten up here. Page 24. Let's take a peek. Let's take a peek. Uh, actually, it's right here. So it's part of the Symbols of Fortune suite of products, which are beautiful. And it's this paper right here. You get two 12 by 12 uh, sheets, and they are uh, $6 for the pack. And as I said, it's very, um, it's very finished with that glossy look. So I thought for starters, what we would do is just compare it to some other papers because I realized through the camera lens, it's a little harder to see exactly what the paper looks like. So um, let's see what the color of this paper is. Uh, so I have a piece of uh, basic white cardstock here. And so it um, looks pretty good with that, but you can see it's a little bit different tone but it's not, I wouldn't really call it an off, uh, uh, you know, it's definitely not van uh, vanilla. Let's grab a piece of vanilla here. So it's definitely more in the, the um, true uh, white family color there. And so that's with basic white. So it would work well with that. Let's look at some other specialty papers and just kind of do some comparison. I'm stalling because they're all on my desk. <laughs> so also in the mini catalog, we have a specialty paper that's a shimmer paper. This is a true glitter paper, I would call it. So you can see it really matches the nails. So if you want to compare what those two look like, this is a little bit flashier. This is a little more elegant, I would say. Uh, of course, this one has a lot of blue in it. When it's pictured in the mini cattle, it looks like it's super, super blue because you can see when it reflects the light, it turns very blue. Uh, but in person, it's more like a, a white with a pink tone. So, um, oh, Deborah, did you guess the right color too? Woohoo! 
So let's look at some other specialty papers. In the uh, annual catalog, we have a paper that is called Linen. Sorry about all the crackling. I'm opening up the package here. Um, so this is the Linen paper. This is in the annual catalog. This will be carrying over into the new annual catalog. And it is literally like fabric. I don't even know if that's, is that even showing up? Wish, can I zoom on here? I can zoom. Can you see the, um, the, the stitching, the fabric? I mean, it is literally fabric uh, that has got paper on the back. So that is the linen paper. So that's what those two look like side by side. You can see the linen is uh, whiter and crisper. Um, definitely more of a true white. Um, where this is a little bit, I would say, almost an off-white. So that's comparing it to the linen paper, in case you were curious. And then another specialty paper that we have in the annual catalog, this is also carrying over, um, is the pearlescent specialty paper. So let's see what it looks like next to the pearlescent. Because I'm super curious. So this is the pearlescent and it has a very pearl-like finish to it. Um, and the pearlescent is very much uh, an off-white. Uh, if I pull in our basic white again, um, you can see it has almost a cream look to it. Uh, maybe not quite as much as very vanilla. But closer to that than it is to white. So that is the pearl. So that kind of tells you... Hopefully that shows you what the, the mother of pearl paper is like in comparison to some of these other papers. All right. So any questions so far? Hi, Nicole from Perth, Western Australia. Thanks for being here. Hey, Pam. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. Um, and Kay shared too. Thank you so much. All right. So let's, um, what can we do with this? Do you think? So um, it has a, oops, I'm really zoomed in, zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to make you guys dizzy. Um, it has a really almost like a window plastic uh, finish on it. So let's find out if we can die cut it. Let's find out if we can um, emboss it. So let's see what we can do with this paper. Bear with me here. Grab a paper trimmer. I've got one little piece here, but we're going to need a little bit more than that. Let's do a piece that is mm -hmm. a long necklace on and I keep, <laughs> I keep worrying it's going to fly into the shot, but I don't think it has yet. Um, I'm going to cut this at five inches. Right. And let's cut it at two and a half. With this finish on it, I'm not 100% sure what we can do with this paper. So I am really curious to find out. All right. So I did, before, before I went live, I did try stamping on it. I used the, here, let me see if I can zoom this up. Oh, gosh, that darn ring light again. There, if I tilt it, maybe that looks better. Um, this one I stamped on it with the... Um, Crane of Good Fortune stamp set. I think this would be a great one if you were doing uh, graduation cards. Uh, does the glimmer show through if you color it with blends? Ooh, that's a really fun idea. Debbie's, Debbie Linda said she's used it to punch out clouds. That would be really pretty. Um, I don't know Deborah would be. I'm going to try that. We'll try coloring it with blends and see what we think. Um, so I used the Stays On jet black ink stays on is a solvent ink and what that means is it dries by uh, evaporation instead of absorption because this paper has a finish on it no other ink is going to soak into this it would just not ever dry and it would smear but the stays on ink dries by just evaporating so it doesn't have to soak in you can stamp it on glass or whatever so if you wanted to stamp on it i would use stays on and I would be very careful because it's a slippery surface and it would be easy for your stamp to slip. I was, um, I had much luck and good fortune in that my stamp did not slip. <laughs> so, uh, so that is, uh, let's see what blends do. Hmm. What color should we grab? 
oh gosh, what color is this? Is this mint macaron? Yes, this is mint macaron. Uh, let's try the mint macaron dark. Oh, squeaky. Oh, that is lovely. Good idea. Debbie, that was a great idea. So this is what the uh, Stampin' Blends. Now I am getting some line marks in that because it is, uh, like I said, it's got a real finish on it. Let's see if I can kind of brush those out a little bit. Usually don't get those with blends, but this, you know, again, it doesn't, uh, it can't soak in here. So it sits right on top of the paper until it dries. That should dry. This is the lighter color. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to dry or not. I'm, I'm squiggling it out with the lighter color here just to see uh, what that looks like. All right, this is the light and dark of the mint macaron. So um, the light might actually be a better choice because it uh, won't have as many um, lines showing through. It's starting to dry on me, so I'm not sure if I can get this squiggled out with the light one. Mm. Basically, just moving the ink around, I think, at this point. So anyway experimenting we're just experimenting so that's an interesting idea is coloring with the blends the the uh glittery part definitely shows through with that let me go back to the dark here so you can see even with the dark that that uh shimmery glittery stuff it does show through for sure no question about it so uh yeah, I think it would still work, Deb. Uh, depends on how you're using it, but um, I, I, you know, I don't think the lines are terrible. Uh, I think you could make that work. So definitely worth playing around with, especially if it's like a small flower or something like that. So you could color it and then you could um, die cut or punch out of there um, and see what that looks like. Uh, I'm uh, looking for a punch that would have kind of a little-ish... Let's try this little flower on the... Well, you can't do a green flower, Susan. Well, sure I can. <laughs> Hang on. Do I have a leaf? I must have a leaf somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm. Here we go. Let's try this one. Um, this one is from the mini catalog too. Uh, you could color it with blends and then see if we can punch it out. We sure can. So then you still have that glimmer, but you've got the color. So, and I don't really see the lines anymore. So good tip, Deborah. I like that one. That, that was a cool, fun thing. It'll experiment. So again, we're just playing with this paper tonight to see what we can do with it. Let's bring in a die cutting machine. Um, I grabbed the big one because I wanted to try embossing it. And uh, these are the three folders I brought. I would love you guys to let me know which one we should use. We have the Pretty Flowers, we have the Meadow Moments, and we have the Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder. Which one should we try? And I, I honestly have no idea how well this will emboss. Maybe the 3D would be the better choice because it is a thicker uh, paper with that shiny um, co coating on the front. But let me know um, what you think could use brushes with blends. Brushes with blends. Um, Jean, do you mean the uh, the blending brushes? Because uh, I don't think ink would dry, regular ink wouldn't dry on here, but I think that the blends will be fine. Like, I'm just going to check and see if this... Nope, I don't have a green thumb, so <laughs> it is drying. Um, so let me know which folder you would like. I've got votes for all of them so far. Oh, 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 I'm behind. I just wasn't looking here, but pretty flowers, meadow moments, meadow moments, pretty flowers. Ornate, meadow moments, ornate flowers. Hmm. Well, I see lots of lots of votes for all of them. So I guess it doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna just move stuff. <laughs> ah, always an adventure. Always an adventure. All right, we have the full size um machine oh to undo the lines use a blending brush oh that's an interesting idea hmm. uh pretty flowers pretty flowers meadow moments i'm seeing more for meadow moments and pretty flowers but a few for ornate hang on i forgot oh no i didn't 
I was like, where's my platform? Well, it was right here the whole time, just buried on my chair, you know, just hanging out. All right, so we're going to try, let's try, um, let me look one more time. Let's see. Okay, the last one I saw was Pretty Flowers. We're going to try Pretty Flowers. Um, if Pretty Flowers does not work, in, um, we'll still try the Ornate Beak Floral because it's a 3D and that might make a difference. So let's try the Pretty Flowers. This is a standard folder and it is a lovely one. I'm, I feel like I'm super duper close. Is that too close for you guys to even see? Probably. I have to be very strategic in how high up I go because I don't want you to see my mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got that in there. I'm going to crank this through. It's so exciting, you guys. Oh, is it going to work? Is it going to work? All right, let's find out. So we got a standard embossing folder, not a 3D, in the pretty flowers. Let's see what happened. Oh, yeah. That definitely worked. That is stunning. Not sure how well it's showing on camera, but in person, it is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> that is really, really, really pretty. You could even color, yeah, like you were saying, you could even color these, just the flowers with the blends. You could go in and color those if you love to color and leave the background part not colored. Ooh, so pretty. All right, well, that was fun. While we have this out, though, how about we try die cutting? How's that sound, you guys? So I've got my number two plate here and uh, I'm going to take my scarred up one. I'm going to take my a little piece I have here. I'm going to use uh, one of the dies from the, um, still got some paper in it from the last time I used it, uh, from the crane. Uh, I think they're the Good Fortune dies is the name of the dies. They're part of the Crane of Fortune bundle. Uh, the Crane of Fortune is not going into the new catalog. I do not see it in there. So I'm assuming that is going to be leaving us. So let's go ahead and see if we can die cut the Mother of Pearl specialty paper. Now I'm realizing this is a very detailed, in, intricate die. So it's possible that with this coating on the paper, it may not cut very well a super intricate die, but might cut a, cut a shape quite well. So let's see how we did. Uh, wow, it looks great. Um, I also, with an intricate die, you often want to set it on either one of the outside edges to get a better, more pressure. And I didn't do that. I slapped it right in the middle and it still cut really well. So that seems like it worked. So let's go ahead and get this out of our way for now. I don't think we're using it again, but I'll, I'll keep it close by. And let's see. Oh, I even brought a take your pick tool with die brush attachment, all the fun tools, all those tools that make crafting so much easier, right? So just rolling out all my little bits and pieces here. All right, and I'll take an injection hole and just give it a poke. See if I can get it to, oops, those are not ejection holes. Those are actually, uh, that one is though. Some of the parts didn't quite come out, probably just because it's this thicker paper, but hopefully it all cut. All right, I finally got the bottom. That was where I should have started was the bottom stem. And it's it's very interesting because it's very stiff. Similar to when you cut, when you die cut like a foil. Because this paper is quite sturdy. That's a good word for it, sturdy. Even though it's so pretty and elegant. Let's see if I can get everything there. I think I've got all the extra bits out. So let's toss our... little bits there and that's what that looks like die cut so it's um it's interesting because you see the shimmer less now that it's die cut but it absolutely does a beautiful job of die cutting so 
let's check off all the things here. Um, we can stamp on it with stays on. We can color it with blends. We can emboss it. We can die cut it. It does all the things. How awesome is that? Let the die fall on your table and the bits will usually fall out. Yeah, I, on this one, I'm not sure if it would because it is such a stiff paper. Let's find out. No, because it, it is, um, although most of them are out, it's just this one that is pretty stuck in there. <laughs> like I'm going to have to pull it out with my fingers because it's very, very stiff. How interesting. Okay. Well, we have these bits and pieces. Um, should we try to make a card out of them, you guys? That's kind of what we do. That's kind of our deal. That's our shtick. So let's see here. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. This piece of paper is five inches by two and a half. And I'm going to try and angle cut this. Might have been easier for me to do this before I... Uh, before I die cut it. So I am putting it in my paper trimmer um, at a slight angle. So I have the, the top corner lined up at the one inch mark. And then on the other side, I am lining up the bottom point at the one inch mark. So because the paper's two and a half, that, that gives it a slant. I'm gonna carefully close that. And I'm going to cut. Okay, so that just cut those two pieces um, at an angle. And I am now going to put a piece of designer series paper uh, between those and make a card. All right, so let's see here. Designer series paper. I had one out. Aha, found it go too terribly far away. So when I got my nails done today, this is the paper I took in with me. <laughs> so uh, this is the um, the uh, symbol of good fortune paper, I believe it's called. Let me double check. Look how pretty. So pretty. So we've got uh, one side has uh, gold elements. And then the other side is a solid color with a pattern. Got lots of, look at these pretty clouds with the beautiful uh, cranes flying. This one is beautiful on the other side. This is if those of you that are on my uh, Sue Stamp Field Facebook group, and I invite any of you to join that group and it's open to anyone to join. Um, this one was the one that I took to the nail salon today, um, for nail, for matching my nails. Um, so there was a color that I almost picked that a lot of you voted for. That was this kind of a pinkish coral color. And then I thought this color went well with the, um, this kind of gray tone here. And then I also was looking at a gold. So, so many pretty traces. Okay. So where were we at here? We looked at the back of that one. This one is with the crane, just super elegant crane there. Really, really pretty paper. This one's really fun with the little butterfly and the flowers, very elegant. That'd be pretty with our, uh, our die cut piece here. Um, and then this one is quite a bit bolder. The front side is a beautiful speckle. Uh, splatter kind of look and then this side I'm just throwing these on here kind of to contrast to see the, the how things look and then this one actually is an actual match for this piece and then the other side is again with the cranes so really pretty 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 paper all right mm. all right so here's what i'm thinking we will take one of these papers and uh, put it between our uh, our embossed piece. So we have this one. We have this one. 
Let's see. Let's grab, let's grab one other option here. Not sure how that one will look. Let's try the other side here that's a little bit bolder. All right, so we're going to go with uh, this one, which is the softer color. This one, which is the bolder pattern. I'm just playing to see what else would work. I think this pattern is going to be too big to show on our on our thing but this one would would work okay should we go with those three or is another one you like uh will the die will the die cut the matching paper mm. i do not know somebody said butterflies and flat embellishments um this one Judy, oh, that, yeah, let's see what that one looks like. Who was that that said that? Oh, was, uh, was that Jean that said that? Jean, I think. This is another one that would, would look quite nice. So I think it's between those two. Yeah, I, I do like this one too. Let's let's try that one. Sorry, I asked your opinion and then I just went for it. But a lot of you did vote for that one already. So I'm, I'm feeling confident that we're okay with that. So um, the bold orange moms are nice too. Yeah. Soft pink, small print coral piece. Yeah. Yep. Lots of good choices here. I, I don't think, um, I don't think we can make an ugly card. Let's see. Is two inches going to be enough on this? Mm. Can I make that work? It's going to be a little tight. I might, uh, I'm feeling like I need extra, <laughs> extra help tonight. So I'm going to cut this at two and a quarter. Because, you know, I'm just having that kind of a day. I'm having a two and a quarter day, not a two on the, on the money day. <laughs> All right, let's do that. That'll give me a little fudge factor. And then we're going to go with five inches. So this is two and a quarter by five. The idea here is that we will put our paper, this is going to be uh, peeking out from our pretty uh, patterned paper. And um, I think Calypso Coral might be a little too bold for me for this one. Wow, yeah, that's really bold. I don't think I want to go that bold. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just grabbing some cardstock, guys. Bear with me here. I'm going to grab my package. Symbols of good fortune page paper. What colors are in here? We've got basic black, calypso coral, crumb cake, evening evergreen, smoky slate, and soft succulent. Hmm. Let's try, we're probably going to end up with white, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to like Smoky Slate either. Hmm. Nope. Sorry. I'm going to go white. Let's go white. <laughs> all right. I think you also could almost go Sahara Sand. Um, I know it says crumb cake. Actually, you know, we could have used this pattern too, come to think of it. This would make an elegant card as well with the, the um, oops, you're backwards, Susan, <laughs> with the bamboo and this, um, this pattern, let me zoom in a little bit, has a, uh, almost like a linen background to it. That one would be pretty as well. That might solve our, uh, our conundrum with our uh, backing paper, my conundrum anyway. All right. Well, let's, let's try it with the pink. We've, we've always got more paper, right? We can always do more options. So I'm going to make this piece be um, five and a quarter by four. My layer piece. And then my card base. 
I am, I am kind of in a little phase here where I like a lot of white anyway, so I'll probably be happy with this. I don't know if you guys will be. Change DSP and you have more choices for the cardstock. You are absolutely right, Jewel. 100% agree. We're going to see if we can make this light pink work, though. This uh, lightened up version of coral. And we could go with the dark cor coral. That might actually be um, attractive. Hey, where'd my scoring blade go? Oh, it's down at the bottom where it belongs. What? All right. Love our paper trimmer. So fabulous. Get my uh, scoring tool here. Get a nice crease there. And see what we think here on our card. I'm keeping the paper trimmer right here because we might change our mind. This one matches my shirt though. <laughs> All right, let's go with that. Let's go with that. All right, so somewhere in this mess, I have a bone folder. Oh, look, it was right where it belonged. I have a grungy bold folder, but it does the job. Stamp and seal is not where it belongs, but I just found it. So I'm going to put my layer on here. Is this the right size? Gosh, I hope it is. Something's wonky here, you guys. I think I cut my paper wrong. But it's our little secret. Nobody will know, right? We won't tell. All right, and then so this piece is going to go in the middle. Middle, middle, is that the middle? Got so far up I can't even see. I got to pull it towards me. That looks more middle-ish, doesn't it? Right there. And then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Okay, wait, you got to get it right, Susan. There we go. <laughs> so let's find some dimensionals somewhere. Somewhere here. We've got some. Pop these up on here. And I don't know, we might need to do a little die cutting here. We might need to have a really cool die. Straddle these and uh, I don't know that our one will show up enough. So I'm going to pop this on here. Lining it up with the end, evening that up. And then I'm gonna peel these pieces off and do my bottom piece. Would be a very pretty wedding card here. All right, so you can see that pretty design. And then we could put this across, I don't know, would that be, it is pretty elegant. We could angle that across, or we could die cut one of these in a different color. We could die cut it out of the boulder calypso. This one's gotten damaged by the sun. The boulder calypso here might be a little too bold. We could do it out of gold, which is always elegant. I wonder what, uh, ooh. Hang on, I got a thought. Could do Flirty Flamingo for our piece, which would almost go better. Let's see what Blushing Bride looks like. I think it's going to be too pink, probably. It's not bad. Let me grab some, oh, I found some gold sitting on my desk. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I would like to try it in gold if you guys are willing for me to 
quickly die cut that and then we'll decide between those two pieces which one we'd like better so i'm going to just grab my die cutting machine that did not go far fortunately i've dinged up my corner on my gold but guess what doesn't matter because i'm not cutting that part pop this on here and let's crank this through Yes, I think. Whoops. All right. You like the flirty flamingo? Oh, the flirty flamingo looks good. Uh, let's see. Flirty flamingo, breast silvers are gray. Lots of good options. Let's see what this one looks like. We could cut a flirty flamingo. We have the technology. We could make that happen. Okay, this, uh, this will give me a good uh, comparison with, uh, yeah, it's actually stiffer you cut out of the, um, the mother of pearl than it is with the, this is stiffer than the foil, but they're both pretty stiff, but <laughs> it's uh, that thick of a paper. Look, I've got a dimensional that is stuck to me. So that's what the gold looks like, which is very pretty, very elegant. Um, kind of introducing a whole new color though. So. We could do that. We also could actually die cut it out of here. That will get kind of lost in the middle part, though. <laughs> okay, let's try it in flirty. We'll see what we think. So many fun options, right? And the thing is, I'm going to have all these extra die cut pieces that I can make other cards with, right? We don't let anything go to waste, do we? <laughs> Flirty Flavingo might be the nicest card base. And with the white die cut you have. Shadow the gold die cut with the mother of pearl. Ooh, I like in the shadow idea. That's fun. That was a fun idea, Nicole. Nicole is saying, here, I'll uh, pop her uh, comment up here. That you could shadow the gold die cut with the mother of pearl die cut. Or we could shadow this uh, this one that we're cutting and see what that looks like all right i'm gonna remove that so it's not covering anything up because i always forget to do that don't i i didn't this time though how about that all right so let's cut one out of just plain old regular cardstock so many good options ouch <laughs> I just whacked my head on my computer. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. I tell you. Bit of a klutz. All right. This might be pretty. And it might be too much. We don't know until we try. All right. This one is a little easier to clean out because it is just good old cardstock. Um, just a quick reminder, some of our prices will be going up in the new catalog, including cardstock. It's just the world we live in, isn't it? All prices are going up. So the nice part is they gave us a heads up about that. So you have an opportunity to restock your cardstock stash before that happens. So there is what the Flirty Flamingo one looks like. If we shadow the Flirty Flamingo one with the mother of pearl one it looks like that if we shadow the mother of pearl with the gold look at all the ways we could do this right so i'm just kind of offsetting it just a little bit that is very elegant as well so many pretty options <laughs> I don't know. What should we do, gang? 
could even do three across, right? Ornate, better for making deeper embossing. I have that one. The ornate embossing folder. Yeah, that one is, um, it is a 3D. So it's going to be a deeper look. And it's also going to, um, that one has a, a smaller pattern. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Come on, Susan, make the words work. I'm going to go with this option. I think it's really pretty. I love the shadowing idea. And uh I am going to, I did not put this on adhesive sheets. So um, you could use, there's pretty good spot here that you could do. Um, uh, oh my gosh, my glue just exploded. <laughs> Hold on, Houston, we have a problem. Hang on. Hang on. This is why we keep paper towels in the craft room, right? <laughs> exploding glue look it's just it's gone it's just really excited it really wants to craft tonight <laughs> this happens every once in a blue moon not very often but every once in a while it just goes a little bit wonky and of course it would do it while i'm live but you know what that shows you what to do if this happens so i've got my sponge here and I got a big old blob. Can you see that? <laughs> Can you see that? Big old blob of glue. So I'm going to take my sponge, pick up that big old blob of glue, and I'm going to sponge it around. So instead of a big old blob, I've got a nice thin layer of stickiness. And I'm going to adhere it to my flirty flamingo, and I'm offsetting it just a bit to get that shadow look. Like that. And then to adhere this one, I could do dimensionals. I think I will. I think I'll actually still oozing. Goodness, settle down glue. Got all excited. I store it upside down so it's ready to go and boy was it ready to go. All right, now it stopped. Now they don't need it anymore. All right, so let's grab some mini dimensionals. And let's finish our card. So I'm only putting the mini dimensionals on the uh, upper and lower portions because those are the part that are going to straddle my, uh, my opening with my pretty paper there. And there we have, oops, I'm still super de duper zoomed up. Sorry about that. Let's unzoom. <laughs> Whoa, wrong way. All right, well, let's take a closer look at this while, while I'm hitting the camera incorrectly. So there is our slightly offset die cut piece. And is that bottle of glue you've had on airplane or upper elevation? Nope, unless you call uh, upper elevation my stamp room because it's on the second floor of our house, but... <laughs> Probably not quite what you meant. Huh? Um, nope, it just decided to go wonky on me. So it happens sometimes, right? Um, so there we have our beautiful card. You absolutely could add um, some elements to that card because mm, we have embellishments, right? Bear with me here. Let's see what would look good. The opal rounds would be pretty. I think opal rounds are retiring. Is that true? Because that would make me sad. I don't think they are. Oh, here's a package that's already open. So let's use an already open package if we're going to use them. Oh, you know what else would look nice? Actually, the champagne would look nice. Champagne rhinestones. Always a good choice. The one I was looking for uh, is the polished dots, which I do have. Actually, the, the brass, but oh gosh, I keep hitting my head on my camera, <laughs> my computer. The uh, brass butterflies would also look good, especially if we'd use the pattern that had the little butterflies on it. <gasps> oh gosh, so fun to play. Oh, another one that would look, oh, here they are. Aha! These are the polished dots. These are actually part of this uh, suite, uh, part of the... Uh, um, 
what do they call it? Symbols of Good Fortune Suite. Let's pull these out, see what we think of these. Bits and pieces kind of card. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I do think, uh, oh, I saw a glue there and I had my card down. Oopsie, that's okay. We'll get rid of that now though. Um, so we could add some ribbon to this. You guys know I do love my ribbon. We could add some embellishments, um, always an option. So let's see uh, what the polished dots look like. So the polished dots are just a clear, um, I might trick my camera to focus. They're just a krill, um, um, they're clear. There's no glitter in them, but they are a bit cloudy. So they are um, trying to come up with a good description and I am failing utterly. <laughs> That's why I'm like hemming and hawing here. So let's just pop one on there and see what we think versus the, they come in a, a pale pink. And yeah, I think I like the pale pink better. I think it's just going to show up a little nicer. They pop on and off very easily on this paper because it's got that, that, um, that coating on it. I'm still super zoomed up, aren't I? Well, hopefully that's okay. Let me know if you, if I'm too zoomed up and it's, it's keeping you from being able to see. Cause sometimes it can get in the way. They come in a, a larger size and a smaller size. Doing some of each here. Another, another small one here. So that just adds um, even more dimension to our card. I used all pink ones, but you also could use the clear ones on this. Again, if you don't have those, um, I think the champagne might be a little too much, but I think the opal rounds would be quite nice. They've got, um, they have glitter in them and they have a lot of pink. So those would also be a really good choice there. So we're going to call it there, I think. Um, you certainly could add a ribbon um, if you wanted to. This one would be very pretty. It's got some of those same colors in it. This one is the Flirty Flamingo from the, the I believe, annual catalog. White would also be a good choice. But I'm actually going to go no ribbon on this. Oh, I know it's not really me, but um, I, I just I like it the way it is. So. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight and uh, helping me create our card this evening. I'm going to switch. I've got little <laughs> dimensional backings everywhere. I'm going to switch the camera here. Opal rounds are carrying over. Oh, that's fabulous news, Jewel. Thank you so much. I'm going to flip the camera around. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, it even it matches my shirt now. So that's good. That's super important, right? Thanks everyone for being here tonight. Thanks again for weighing in and helping us uh, create another beautiful card. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you next time. That'll be this coming Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, also wanted to remind you, if you're not currently signed up for my uh, project sheets, um, you can do so right here. I send out free project sheets every week and uh, give you some, lots of creative ideas. So you can sign up for those um, on my blog at SueStampfield.com. We also have the crafting and tutorials available for purchase. If you need or need a lot of creative ideas, I take one fold, fun fold and design a whole bunch of cards to go with that and have step-by-step -step instructions in those tutorial bundles. And the next crafter noon is going to be uh, coming up April 20th. Uh, if you place an order in May uh, for $50 or more, you're going to qual or excuse me, in April, <laughs> you'll qualify for the May Crafternoon, which means you'll get a packet in the mail for me and you'll get the tutorial bundle for free. So thanks for being here, everyone. I uh, really appreciate you hanging out with me. We had fun tonight. Yay. We always have fun, don't we? So uh, thank you for being here. Take care. Have a lovely rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.